Leading a team can be wonderful. You have support, you get to help people develop, and the company goes farther faster. But if you're the leader of a team, it's gonna happen one day. Sooner or later, you'll get a complaint or something will happen between team members or someone will file a formal grievance. Then what do you do? Hi entrepreneurs, I'm Vicki Brown and you're in the right place if you want to engage your team, boost your business, and grow your leadership muscle. Well, generally the first thing you do is launch an investigation. Now I know that sounds like a lot. You're probably thinking, what, an investigation? I have no idea how to do that. Is it really necessary? Well, yes it kind of is necessary because you need to get to the bottom of the issue. The purpose of an investigation, and by the way, if that term strikes terror in your heart, then just think of it as fact-finding. The purpose of the fact-finding is to, well, uncover the facts of what happened. Now, you and I both know that there are at least two sides to every story. So, when someone comes to you complaining about what someone said or did, you owe it to yourself and the company to get as much information as you can hopefully from as many sources as you can. So you have solid intel that can help you decide what action you're going to take. So again, before you break out in a cold sweat, I'm going to give you the top five steps you need to take when launching an investigation. First, you need to get the specifics from the person who's making the complaint. What day or time did the thing happen? What was specifically said or done? Were there any witnesses or other people who either were present or are otherwise aware of the situation? For instance, maybe the person told someone just after everything happened. Now a few things are critically important to remember. Let the person get it all out. Give them space to fully tell you what happened. And if they can do it also in written form, well, that's even better. And while they are telling you their story, don't jump to conclusions or promise confidentiality or guarantee a specific outcome. I know, when someone's recounting something that really upset them, we all feel compelled to try to make them feel better, right then and there. Well, this isn't the time to indulge that instinct. You don't have enough facts yet, so it's not a good idea to get ahead of yourself. And, as for confidentiality, well, generally, in order to get to the bottom of things, you have no choice but to talk to other people and bring them in. Now, of course, that doesn't mean gossiping or talking to people who have nothing to do with the situation, but you can only promise confidentiality to the extent possible while you determine what happened. Another thing to keep in mind is that, depending on the issue, you may be legally obligated to report the situation. A really good example of this is when an employee goes to their manager to complain about someone sexually harassing them. Well, if the manager doesn't run this complaint up the food chain, not only are they exposing the company, but they're also creating personal exposure for themselves. So there may be instances where you literally are required to tell someone else. Now, this is a really good time to mention, again, that I'm not an attorney, employment or otherwise. And this information is provided for general purposes only, and it's not to be considered legal advice. So I urge you to always consult legal counsel and other appropriate licensed professionals. Okay, once you've heard the whole story, now it's time for you to figure out if you need to take any immediate steps to protect the employee or stop the behavior. Now, this will largely depend on what the issue is. If it's harassment or discrimination, well then you're obligated to make sure that it stops immediately, or again, you may end up being liable. But if it's, I don't like the way Mary tells me to do my work, well, that may not rise to the level of protection that the others do. You'll have to use your judgment. And here's a pro tip. If it is a case of harassment, abuse, or discrimination, at this point, you should definitely call your counsel. They can help you with next steps and may even end up doing the investigation themselves or referring you to a professional. Just keep in mind that there's an alphabet soup of employment laws that you need to navigate. 
the ADA, the ADEA, OSHA, and Title VII. Those are just a few. Okay, now you've reviewed the complaint. Now you need to figure out who's going to investigate. Again, it may be you, someone else on your team, or your attorney. Oh, another thing to remember, I know, lots of things to remember, right? Well, another thing to remember is that various states may have guidelines that impact using non-employee third parties as investigators. For instance, here in California, an outside HR person, like me, can't conduct workplace investigations unless they have a private investigator's license. So be sure to watch out for little quirks like that. Next, create a list of people you need to interview. Again, it should be anyone who either witnessed the incident or had knowledge of it. And of course, the person the complaint is against. In fact, they should be the very first person you interview. I've created a list of sample questions for you. You can find them by using the link in the description below. When you're creating the questions, consider that you want to ask each of the witnesses the same series of questions. Don't ask leading questions or put words in anyone's mouth. And don't disclose any potential outcome to anyone you're interviewing. They're there to tell you what they know, not the other way around. Of course, make sure the interview happens in a quiet, private setting. Be respectful, and if they say something you don't understand or something that needs more information or clarification, then ask them follow-up questions until you're clear on their answers. Once you have all the information you need, now it's time for you to analyze it all and come to a decision about how you want to handle the issue. Again, you may want to loop your attorney in for help. But no matter if it's something with potentially huge exposure or a small disagreement between colleagues, as a leader, you're going to find yourself in a position to have to deal with the people issues that can come up. And sometimes they're going to be more involved than a simple facilitated discussion between two people. So if that happens, keep these five steps in mind. If you found this information helpful, please subscribe and share. And don't forget to grab a copy of the sample investigation questions by using the link in the description. And remember, your inspired leadership is the secret sauce to having a high performance team and a wildly successful business you'll love. I'll see you next time on Leader's Journey.